All right, this video is about redemption. So about a year ago, I made my mushroom witch hat. I made the little staff to go along with it. It was great, it was cute, just constantly able to live out my cottagecore fantasy dreams. But then there was an outcry from the people. Okay, by, by outcry, I mean like I got two comments talking about this, <laughs> but hey, I'm a people pleaser. That's an outcry to me. <laughs> People said that the rest of my outfit didn't look up to par with all the work that I put into everything else. And honestly, I agree. It was a last minute thing that I threw together and the only things I had was a shirt, dress, and corset that I had from Amazon. Which it did work pretty well for the time, but it's just, it's not very whimsical, is it? But now it's time to up the whimsy by making my own custom mushroom dress and assumably uh, achieving my final form. The, <laughs> the only problem is I don't know how to make a dress, not in the slightest. My sewing skills are the bare minimum that I need to get by. So this is going to be an interesting project. <laughs> Also, yeah, my, my hair is orange now. First time ever dyeing my hair. Didn't mean for it to get this orange, but it is orange now, so we're, we're just living with it. Was it a result of the quarter life crisis or me subconsciously trying to become Rachel Makesy? I'll never tell. Yeah, it was probably both those reasons. So I think the best way to go about this is going to be a little bit different than my normal projects. <laughs> because normally in my projects, I'll get a bunch of inspiration, then I'll draw up a concept, and then I'll figure out how to build it from there. But since this one is sewing, I can't really do that. I can't just come up with a concept and be like, oh, I know how would I make that sleeve. I, <laughs> not a clue. So I think the best course of action for this is going to be me going online and finding a bunch of patterns that I can use. Because I think if I'm going off of other people's patterns, it's going to go way smoother than if I tried to make anything. And plus it's literally instructions. It should just be as easy as building Legos or something, right? And in editing, this is going to be where I just cut to me crying over a sewing machine. <laughs> this learning curve's got hands. Yeah, that's, that's about what I thought. <laughs> Okay, so I think I have an idea why I want. The first being the Celtic dress sewing pattern short medieval dress puffy sleeve cottage core dress fairy tale gown. Easy instructions. <laughs> I like all those buzzwords and it looks like a nice simple base dress. I did find a couple of corsets and bodices on Etsy as well, but then I did remember that I actually have a physical pattern. I like never buy physical patterns, but I saw this one at Joann's when I was last there and knew that I would probably make a project like this. Also ripped Joann's, the only fabric store near me going bankrupt is fantastic. And then for the overskirt, I'm guessing I can just find a YouTube tutorial for that. It is a circle. I'm going to trust myself to say that I can at least do that. All right, now that we have our patterns picked out, I'm just going to buy and download these and go through the instructions to make sure that I actually have all the materials to make it. Now while I'm going through and doing that, I think now would be a good time to tell you about this video's sponsor, Storyiverse. Are you someone who loves indie animation? Heck yeah I do! And are you someone who enjoys reading stories from fantasy worlds with action, mystery, horror, a little bit of romance? Also, yes, but I don't see how these two things could be related in one promo. Now, what if I told you there was a way to combine both of these things into one immersive storytelling experience? Whoa! Oh shoot, whoa, whoa, get out of town! This, <laughs> I don't know what this bit is anymore. Storyverse is a brand new app that brings together talented animators and writers from around the world to create original animated short stories in a new read-watch format. So basically, it's kind of like a new evolution of comics or graphic novels that use animation to set the tone, the world, the characters, which will then blend into a reading section that will give you a more in-depth view of the story. These animated short stories are really good animation made for adults with mature themes in a wide range of genres, all with their own unique animation styles. I really and particularly enjoyed Red, which is their dystopian sci-fi twist on the Little Red Riding Hood fairy tale. I mean, they gave Little Red a cyber knife. Of course it's going to be good. I think that people should give more of their fairy tale characters cyber knives, in my opinion. Honestly, at first, I thought it'd be a little bit jarring jumping back and forth between the two formats, but it's designed in such a way that it just blends so seamlessly together just by scrolling down the page that it actually, it felt really natural. Storyverse is available to download right now for free from the Google Play or the App Store, and they're constantly updating with new animations and stories, so make sure to check out their TikTok or Instagram for new trailers or behind the scenes content. Thank you once again to Storyverse for sponsoring this portion of the video, and now it's time to get back to the project. 
All right, now it's time to make a quick sketch for what I think this dress can look like now that I know what my options are. Mainly taking inspiration from classic Ren Faire dresses, but also a little bit from the Lolita style as well. Okay, so these are the two options that I have for the dress based off what patterns I could find. I definitely like having the mushroom overskirt, but also I feel like having the mushroom sleeves would be so fun. I honestly couldn't decide between the two because in my mind, like, yeah, you have the puffy sleeve, obviously that should have the mushroom pattern on it. But also with it compared to like the skirt and the hat as well, I think it might be a little bit overwhelming. So I literally just went and put a poll on my Instagram to let y'all decide. And so far y'all like the white sleeve one, which I'm honestly kind of happy about because that means I can wear this dress with more Ren Bear items that don't have to be this specific mushroom theme. So now with the plan, it was time to go and gather supplies. And for this one, I wanted to try and use mostly thrifted stuff like curtains and tablecloths. It's always a gamble if you're going to find anything, but if you do, it's a really good find. But then I did need to go and stop at Joann's for more specific stuff like elastic and zippers. And guys, I think uh, Joann's might be on to us. They're, they're trying to get in on this mushroom cottage core theme But don't worry, I would I would never fall for this, this corporate brand's temptation. Nice try, Joann's, but we ain't falling for it. So there's the slightest possibility that I might have gone just a little bit overboard, <laughs> but I'm not sure. I just kept on finding different red fabrics. I was like, oh, maybe that could work. Oh, maybe that one could also work. The fact that it's like most of these things were like one or two dollars, I'm just going to buy all of it instead of regretting not to buy it later. I will say Mumbo definitely did enjoy having all this new fabric to get all of her little cat fur on. So at least there's that. Okay, so obviously for the white dress, two large bed sheets. Now for the corset, I ended up finding this really, really pretty red fabric. It has some flower texture on it. It's really soft. It's a tad bit metallic, but overall I think it's going to give it a nice texture. I think this is a pillowcase that can be used for the lining. Then this one, this one's orange. Why did I buy this one? Oh, that's for a different project. Yeet. All right, first thing we're going to be tackling is the corset, which is very terrifying. Even though it's called Simplicity, I can't even read the back. Well, I guess at least it tells me when or when I won't need a nap. Let's see what happens. Just keeps on unfolding, huh? <laughs> Why is there so much? See, is this the one I want? Is, is this the one I want? Oh, this is already so much. I thought this was called simplicity. There's nothing simple about this. Okay, let me just find all the pieces on here first. It might be better if I move to the floor for this. After a little deciphering, I did figure out what patterns I needed to cut out for the specific corset I wanted to make. Then I had to do a little bit of quick research to figure out how to read these. Not gonna lie, I kind of love the vibe of sewing YouTube videos. The most like upbeat, cheesy music and graphics, and there's just like the crafting moms telling you how to sew. And it's actually just so comforting, if I'm being honest. What is that silly little tomato? Ah, there you are. So with this project, instead of doing a mock-up as I definitely should have done, I decided to just do the lining and kind of treat that as my mock-up. You know, still not like the best idea since I only had enough fabric for this one lining, but it actually ended up working pretty well. I was able to make some alterations to the pattern by adding a little bit more room around the waistline. Other than that, it was pretty good. And now it's time to dust off the old sewing machine. Foot pedals in here somewhere. After having to look up a tutorial on how to thread the sewing machine because I forgot, I just had to stitch a straight line down the seams to connect them together, which I thought was going pretty well until it wasn't. So, okay, so far I've gone two seams into the lining. First seam went great, you know, right side to right side looks good. Immediately, second seam, uh, wrong side to wrong side. Great, great start. We're only on the second seam and I already have to rip it apart. This is going to be a long project, I can see. Okay, with that fixed, it's now time to stitch the rest of things where I'm sure nothing, nothing else will go wrong. This is a face of someone who has utmost confidence in what they're doing. C confidence, definitely not fear. I am now slowly realizing the benefits of doing mock-ups. 
Not only is it to make sure that fitting is right, it's also to get rid of all your stupid mistakes first. After sewing the lining all together, I realized that I just did not reverse the other side of it. So now the seams are on two different sides, so I can't bring myself to care because this is the lining. No one's going to be able to see it. I'm not, I'm not redoing it. Also, normally for projects, my instinct is always like, if something's not going right in the beginning, just kind of ignore it and hoping that it'll work itself out later which I know is not the right answer. With sewing, the further and further you get, the more you are committing. <laughs> now time for the outer fabric and interfacing. I don't think I quite realized just like how much of sewing is just cutting out the same shape over and over and over again. But I think I have everything now. And now for actually sewing. I'm looking at the instructions and I'm going to, I'm going to try my best. But honestly, the, <laughs> I don't know what half this stuff means. Turn bindings inside Place over, close seams, to inner, edges, press stitch edges, along basting, over, seams, slip, baste in slip place. stitch ends means nothing to me. A continuous bias? I have plenty of continuous biases, but I don't see how that applies to this. <laughs> so I'm kind of just going to go with what I think is right. I realize that me going against the instructions risks even more this not turning out well, but I, I'll take all responsibility for not listening. I don't, I don't know how. <laughs> Okay, for the most part, I did get the gist of the instructions, add the interfacing to the outer fabric, sew together those pieces, then connect it to the lining, and then attempted to finish off the edges. Don't let this montage fool you. This process was a struggle and took me several hours. Okay, the corset is all sewn together. After adding some hems along the side, it actually, it actually doesn't look too bad. I won't go as far as to say professional, but at least finished perhaps. It still needs to add the eyelets and lace it up and stuff like that, but I really, I, I don't want to look at it anymore. So moving on to the dress, you know, taking a break from all that, cutting out patterns and sewing them together to then cut out patterns and sewing them together, you know, some more, more riveting content. So this dress pattern was an Etsy download. And let me just tell you, it was a world of difference from the simplicity one. Yeah, the pieces were a little hard to tape together, but that was mostly Mumbo's fault. Let me, let me put the paper down. Hey, hey, stop, no! Anytime I do anything on the floor, Mumbo always just decides that it's her responsibility to cause problems on purpose. But yeah, after working with a simplicity one, everything about this pattern was just like 10 times easier. From having the option to only print out the one size that I need, to all of the instructions, just very beginner friendly. This dress is actually taking up a lot more fabric than I thought. I might actually have to go out and buy a third sheet just to be able to do everything. No, don't touch it. I'm already starting. No, stop touching it. No. No! <laughs> yep, give it, thank you. Yeah, I definitely don't have enough material. Look how big the freaking sleeve pattern is. And it's a cut on the fold. It's supposed to be twice the amount of this. I know it's supposed to be a puffy sleeve, but this is a bit much. And you know, it's absolutely infuriating. I did end up finding some more white fabric from a cosplay that I never ended up doing. But the problem is, since these are puffy sleeves, this is a bit too stiff for it. But it would have been perfect for the skirt. But you know what I just cut out of the other material that I could use for the sleeves? The freaking skirt! This material would have been perfect for the skirt, but now I already cut it out of this one. So now I think I'm just going to go to Walmart to buy another bed sheet. I don't know if maybe at this point, if it would have been just more cost effective to go and get the right material. <laughs> because now this dress is literally going to be made out of three different bed sheets. Hopefully it'll blend together. After a quick journey to Walmart, I quickly realized that I couldn't just buy a sheet and need to buy a whole set. A pillowcase probably could have just worked for the sleeve. You know, I just probably could have gotten two pillowcases. They had a sense of that, but you know, it's fine. <laughs> I now have more sheets, so, you know. Now that I have all my fabric patterns ready, it's time to suffer, I mean, start sewing. I did definitely have a lot more confidence going into this one because they had an entire document full of pictures and pretty simple instructions on each step. The first step was to create a stitch that was specifically made to gather the bottom of the bodice. I immediately realized I did the wrong stitch and I have to 
to undo it. I, I went in with so much confidence. I had pretty little pictures telling me what to do this time. The process of undoing that, now my material is just absolutely fraying like crazy. I would like to say that this was only after one more attempt, but after two more attempts, I finally got to the point where I could gather the fabric along the thread. All right, gathering done. That took forever. What's the next step? Do the same thing to the top. Gosh darn it. After begrudgingly finishing the gathering and adding the back panels, the boss was good and ready to move on. Mumbo. Okay, for the skirt, in order to get that more like poofy looking silhouette, that means I'm going to have to have a petticoat, which is just like an underskirt that is meant to just floof everything up with a lot more fabric. So let's get started working on that. All right, that should be here in two days. <laughs> Look, I'm custom making everything else. I think I get one, one Amazon item, all right? <laughs> While waiting on that, it's time to move on to the poofy sleeves. I probably need to iron this first, don't I? Honestly, I probably should have been ironing everything this whole time, but ugh, All right, to get started on these sleeves, we're going to need a little bit of elastic, and all I have to do is measure the length I want it to fit around my wrist, cut out that mark, do a lock stitch at one end, and then pull it as far as it could go across the sleeve, and then slowly start sewing it to the fabric. My sewing machine did not love the fact that I was pulling on the elastic while doing this and was kind of fighting me, but eventually it did get there. It did turn out a little bit wonky, but good thing that there's a ton of ruffle to distract you from its wonkiness. After that, I just had to close off the seam, do it one more time, I have my silly looking sleeves. Also, can we just take a moment to appreciate the deterioration of my room as we go, just because I throw everything on every surface and then forget where anything is? Professional crafting YouTuber, everybody. Hopefully, going to start assembling everything today and actually get to the whole mushroom part of this, because so far in this video, I realize it's just been me following patterns and complaining about it. <laughs> so let, let's get, hopefully get to the, the more whimsical part today. You would think at this point I would be able to figure out right and wrong sides from each other. That looks about right to sew on. There you go. I definitely feel like I'm learning the basics of sewing from this project, but I know that there's just so much more that, that I don't know. You know, as soon as I learn how to actually sew, it's over for y'all. <laughs> I'm going to be so powerful. I'm going to be able to make as much whimsical clothing from a single tablecloth that you, you won't even believe. Guys, guys, the vision, the vision is kind of happening. I mean, it's being held together with sewing clips and a dream, but like, this is kind of the vision. Yeah, the corset is not fitting as it was tended to. The sleeves are a little whack. But this is this is almost wearable clothing, which is the furthest I've ever gone with sewing before. <laughs> Honestly, just the most frustrating thing right now is that it's like, I know that some things aren't fitting and I need to alter them, but I just don't know how. <laughs> Now with a little bit more confidence from being able to see the vision, I then was able to hem and attach the skirt, and then I just needed to close off the back with a zipper. Um, never installed a zipper before, much less a hidden zipper, which apparently there's a specific way you're supposed to do that, and a specific attachment that you need. I didn't have that. I was surprised I even had a zipper foot at all, so I kind of just treated it like a regular zipper. And it was going well, uh, for, for the most part. How long was the bottom bob and now thread? <laughs> Uh, it was a struggle, but it did eventually get there. All right, the zipper is zippering, and theoretically I should be able to try it on. Y'all are never gonna believe this, but I have actually made a functioning dress. Like these, these were just random fabric, and now it's closed. I mean, I know us humans have like figured this concept out like a few hundred years ago, but like I haven't done it before. I'm impressed. <laughs> Let me have this. Oh my gosh, and with the corset, it's like, it's actually looking like the concept art. That's crazy! Alright, so I think next is going to be adding the eyelet so this corset can actually function. And then it's just the overskirt, and then we're, we're going to be good to go, and it's falling apart. Okay, next up the plan was to move on to adding the eyelets, but unfortunately I kind of just bought the eyelets assuming I would be able to install them with also the tools that I have for my previous leather kit, which uh, did, did not work. Maybe I should have just bought one of those uh, actual tools to do this. 
so while I wait for that kit to arrive, I then moved on to the overskirt. Completely throwing out the idea of measure once, cut, no. Measure twice, cut once. I'm just going for it. It's an overskirt. How badly could I mess it up? The more it's messed up, the more it adds to the whimsy. That's what I always say, as of right now. Well, it turns out, even the simple overskirt, I have the power to mess up because that ain't a circle. That's a freaking ellipse. Just fully committing to the fact that it's going to be uneven no matter what I do now, I'm, I just continue on. I know random cutting is not a good solution, but I feel, feel like this will work. The vibes are telling me to cut more fabric, so I'm just going to do it. And now guess what it's time for? Another hour of sewing as I hem and attach the skirt. Yay. Who knew that sewing a whole dress would be so much sewing? Okay, I might have gotten a little bit carried away. All the overskirt is now done, which is great. The problem is, is I forgot that I still have to put mushrooms on the skirt and I probably should wait until after that to finish everything together. I mean, I can still do it. It's just going to be way more annoying now, but all the sewing is done. So close to being done with this project. So in order to make the spots for the overskirt, I decided to make it on Cricut vinyl. I did consider using the airbrush to paint them on, similar to how I did with the hat, which would have given it a more natural look, but overall the white vinyl is going to be a lot more saturated and also way easier to do. This was supposed to be the easy part, and then you know what? Cricut just decides, no, no, we can't, we can't read your machine, even though it is hooked up. How many updates does Cricut need? Three. It was three updates. Oh, you're connected. You're connected. Yes. Oh, I was so scared. I was going to have to cut these by hand. It's just circles, but I don't want to do it. That's the machine's job. I ain't doing that. All right, I really didn't know how many spots I was going to need to cover this whole thing, so I just used the entire roll of it. And now we can finally iron them on and make this look so cute and whimsical. But first we have to do the less whimsical, just straight up ironing the fabric. You know, that thing I should have been doing the entire time. You know, I'm really curious what the reaction to this video is going to be because like sewing, it's obviously not my specialty compared to everything else. And I can kind of foresee a lot of people who have been like, I've been sewing for 20 years and you forgot to do all this stuff and flatten your seams. But also there's a good amount of people that are just like, I like to see you struggle or more, I like to see you figure out the process with something that you're not too familiar with. So let me know in the comments if you're someone who also struggles with sewing and has no idea what they're doing or someone who's been sewing forever and has tips that you want to give me because I really do enjoy being able to make my own clothes either for real life or for cosplay and I really do want to get better at it. So any help is appreciated. Alright with our spots ironed on and having the actual proper tools to now install the eyelets we can finally get to finishing this project. That works so well. I know I should be happy that it worked and turned out well. I just hate when buying the right materials is the right answer. It just kind of feels like admitting defeat. Like what you mean I can't just will it to work with what I had. <laughs> but at least it works, it's easy, and I can finish this dress. And with that, this dress is finally complete. It might have been a struggle learning how to sew, but by god is this dress fun to twirl in. If you so happen to stumble upon this channel and like this video, please consider subscribing. As always, I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye!